Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. I'm a family physician, and today I want to talk about antibodies and antibody testing. Antibodies are created by our body when we become exposed to viruses or bacteria. Antibodies are like little soldiers and they attack the viruses and bacteria and they're very specific. So an antibody against measles won't work against the chickenpox, for example. After the virus or bacteria leaves our body, the antibodies hang around. So we can measure the level of antibodies in our blood to determine whether or not we have immunity to the virus or bacterium. And having antibodies in the blood means that we have immunity. So the challenge with the novel coronavirus right now is we want to determine how many people have antibodies or immunity to it so that we can figure out how to proceed with opening up and things like that. The challenge is finding a test that is both sensitive and specific. And specific is another word for precise because if we have a test that's too sensitive, then it will pick up uh, the people with novel coronavirus antibodies, but it will also pick up people with antibodies that look like coronavirus antibodies. And if we have a test that's too specific, then we will pick up people with accurately with coronavirus antibodies, but we'll miss a lot of people who might have antibodies because the test is too specific. Let me explain this in an example. So let's say you're at a big party and you wanna find out who knows your friend and your friend's name is Samantha. So you can go around and ask a lot of people, do you know Samantha? And a lot of people will say yes, but some of the people who say yes might know a different Samantha. Like they'll know someone named Samantha, but that Samantha is not the friend that you are referring to. So that test is very sensitive. It picks up a lot of people, but it's not that good at picking up the right people. So what you can do is you can ask a different question. You can say, do you know my friend Samantha who has a pet rabbit named Buttons? Now this question is much more specific and there probably aren't that many people named Samantha who have a pet rabbit named Buttons. So you'll, the people who say yes to your question will most likely know your friend Samantha. But the problem is you'll miss people who know your friend Samantha, but who don't actually know that she has a pet rabbit named Buttons. They might not know she's a rabbit person. They might think that she's a cat person or a dog person or even a fish person. <laughs> so that test, that second question is more specific. It's more accurate, it's more precise, but it might not pick everyone up. And the challenge is finding a test for the coronavirus that is both sensitive and specific and has the right balance between the two. Some of the studies have come out lately and they've indicated that there seems to be a lot of people in the population who already have antibodies to the coronavirus. However, scientists have criticized those studies for using tests that are too sensitive. So some of these people might look like they have antibodies to the coronavirus in their blood, but those antibodies aren't actually the right antibodies. So that's the information about the test and like the type of test. The other challenge with antibody testing is that when we look at the test, we usually look at the number of antibodies that people have. And if they reach a certain number of antibodies, that means they're immune to the virus or bacterium. If we try to do that with the coronavirus, we have difficulty because we don't exactly know how many antibodies we need to have immunity right now. And we also don't know how long the immunity lasts. So that's why it's really too early to be talking about things like immunity certificates or really to tell people whether or not they're immune to the coronavirus and how long they'll be immune for. We just don't have enough information. As you can see, there are a lot of challenges to testing and antibody testing around the coronavirus. And we still have a lot of research to do, but hopefully the information in this video today will help you to better understand the news articles and the studies that you're reading. I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments and share this video with your friends. I'll see you next time.